English Teachers Association was such a, a melting pot of people who were passionate about what they did. They were very collaborative. They were always wanting the, you know, wanting the best for their students, and I think that was um, that was what stood out for me. Robin was one of a number of uh, very influential women in the in the English Teachers Association of that time, and I'd nominate people like uh, Fran Lacey, uh, who later was an inspector of schools, Pat Morgan. Um, Margaret Hopkins, mm -hmm. uh, Mandy Tunica, who was heavily involved in the History Teachers Association, but also uh, and a very active member of the English Teachers Association, and Robin herself. Um, and the, these people uh, were influential in the teaching of English, but they're also highly influential in nudging. And nudging is the word nudging um, people that they believed had something to offer. Jimmy Mixie was always fantastic people. Phyllis Kitson, extraordinary woman, amazing woman. Um, Jack Britton, a uh, sharp, clear thinker who was very strategic in actually supporting Phyllis and moving away from the ETG to go into the AOT. Graham Little, whom I've written in my tribute, is probably you know, just about the most significant figure in English, you know, in the second half of the 20th century. Frank Bladwell, who later on went into a career with Currency Press, and his mum, Grace. Um, Ken Watson, I mean, shake, sort of rubbing shoulders with these giants. Ken was introducing us to adolescent fiction, which we'd never heard about at university, and, and critiquing it all. And Jack Thompson, I mean, I learnt more about reader response literary theory and Wolfgang Eser and and those people from Jack Thompson than from anybody else. Um, you know, his, his book, Teenage Read, Understanding Teenage Reading, was terrific. And, and, and he was a late bloomer internationally. He wasn't recognised till quite late. The first international conference he went to I was at in Canada in 1986. Gave a brilliant paper. And Jack was, was wonderful. Chris Carroll was, was a, you know, a feisty at times and always stick up for the right things. Rod Leonardo, he took over as secretary Around Joyce Moore's table, groups of people came with different backgrounds, but the thing that brought them together was what English in New South Wales should look like. And so the brother Paul Brox of this world, um, coming in from the Catholic education system, with a wealth of knowledge and interest in, in English curriculum and the Armidale influence, the Sydney University influence, um, around that table, uh, uh, Professor Rob Eagleson, uh, Ros Arnold, the education influence from Sydney University, the, the Thompsons of the, of the world. Ken Watson, who, you know, started, was an English teacher, always interested in children's literature, became a, a lecturer, and I'm sure his influence, he has had a huge influence on a lot of English teachers over many years. But then through the ETA, we then got connected with really important people in Australia. Garth Boomer, for example. You know, we, we were, if you like, introduced through to Garth through uh, ETA and AOTE. Um, Bill Corcoran up in Queensland. John Dixon, you know, the absolute inspirational, you know, catalyst because of growth through English coming out of the Dartmouth Conference. You know, John was out here. Jimmy Britton was out here in 1972, I think. Leslie Stratter, I mean, we, we had a seminar at the Carrington Hotel in Katoomba in 1975. Now, we had 20, I think most of us from this New South Wales, absolute key people at the time, and who later on became key leaders of English. A magnificent workshop run by Leslie Stratter, and it transformed the lives of us. Rob Eagleson from Sydney University in those days was the vice president, but all of those people were so influential on um, spotting talented people to bring into the association. And um, I remember, you know, Marge Aldred was the president when I first joined. And Grace Bladwell, Frank Bladwell's mum was the secretary. When the secretary decided that she would retire, Marge Aldred said, I've got a very uh, talented young teacher on my staff who'd make a great secretary, Rosalind Arnold. Um, a little bit later, um, 
we needed a secretary when Roslyn went on to do other things and uh, Fran Lacey said, oh, I've got um, a great teacher on my staff, Chris Carroll. And so, you know, it went on that uh, I just think that for a long time, ETA people have been able to spot talent and to bring them into the association. For a young teacher uh, beginning their professional pathway to come on board ETA Council and to just be part of that professional conversation with some of the key movers and shakers who were the drivers of uh, curriculum, the drivers of, of policy, uh, key figures in the department, uh, people who are having a profound impact in terms of what was happening in classrooms across the state. It was just a fantastic opportunity. During the daytime, they'd, uh, they'd be working for the department in the Directorate of Studies, they'd be working with teachers, they'd be developing curricula and working with the board members. And during the night time, they'd go to English Teachers Association meetings and, uh, and they'd canvas ideas, they'd uh, workshop new ideas, they'd, uh, they'd bring people in they had the hidden secrets of what was being discussed in high places. So there was that, that beautiful, um, that beautiful capacity to go somewhere, talk business, talk English, and come away feeling as though you were, you knew what was at the cutting edge, or you knew what was being discussed. And I think that was the powerful thing of the English Teachers Association at that time. It was the accessibility to great minds that was an absolute privilege. And so there was a seamlessness around all of this stuff for us. And that may have just been um, fortunate. That may have been just a, you know, a function of our region, but it, but it worked well. And of course, all the other person who was really important in the local ETA, the other people were the English inspectors. I think the role of the inspectors, English inspectors, who were also ETA people was really important. They were crucial to, le to leadership um, around syllabus development, in, in certainly in my region. When Mandy Tunica became an inspector of schools, and I was at that time president of ETA, I had worked with Mandy and she'd been a, a history teacher, and I thought, well, we must get this lady onto, onto ETA Council. And um, she has become since a, a great advocate and supporter of English teachers and has been a wonderful de staff developer in schools, but um, in English, but she um, had confessed to me that when she would go out to her inspections, one of the first questions she would ask her candidate was, and are you a member of your professional association? Those people, they weren't just assessing people for their list, they did that of course, but they also acted as kind of de facto, well recruiters, some of them, um, which is good, but de facto spreaders of the message of English and, and the English Teachers Association. It was a practice in those days that syllabus committees were chaired by a member of the inspectorate. So the 1971 committee, the reason, um, the, one of the reasons that Graham Little was chair of that committee was because he was an inspector. And I believe the youngest inspector in the state at the time, um, uh, or, or the youngest English inspector, but certainly someone who had um, advanced very quickly in, in English teaching. Sydney University was the dominant uh, influence uh, as far as the ETA goes. It was a continuity between being involved in academic life and being involved in the ETA. And in fact, um, we all at the University of Sydney in the English education area encouraged students as quickly as possible to join the ETA because that was where they would get the resources and they could also develop the resources. I was just extremely lucky to go through the dip ed at Sydney University when um, you know, people like Ken Watson and, um, and Ros Arnold were teaching there. Ken Watson taught me briefly as a student, uh, was a lecturer when I was in the Diploma of Education and was a senior lecturer when I did postgraduate Master of Education and did courses in the Faculty of Education at Sydney Uni. So Ken Watson was there in a range of roles providing uh, professional development for me in over many years. Uh, it was also in his Diploma of Education class that I met my wife. As an academic, I've maintained my involvement with the ETA because it was such a natural affiliation between the academic um, way of seeing the world and the more practical approach that 
the ETA allowed you to um, also develop. I had done my English honours degree at Sydney University and loved it, absolutely loved it, but um, I had never been, been introduced to or even knew that there was a whole world of very sophisticated young adult literature out there. and. And you know, under people like Ken, was introduced to writers like um, you know Ivan Southall and um, you know Alan Garfield and all of these um, uh, Leon Garfield rather, Alan Garner, um, uh, Patricia Wrights, and all of these people, Rosemary Southall, that, that had just passed me by as a university student. The other big thing the ETA was certainly on the front foot on was on drawing attention to originally before we established Peter children's literature and especially teenagers literature and this is one of the great achievements of Ken Watson um, you know so the ETA became a very very powerful agent for informing people that you didn't have to just teach adult fiction you know Wilkie Collins and so on to teenagers there actually was a flourishing well it wasn't flourishing it was development but he also encouraged that so that was a very important thing the ETA did with respect to literature it has, has been the you know very rich um, sense of the history of English and English teaching in this state that um, comes through the ETA and, and and its history and the way that um, involvement in in council brings you into contact with wonderful um, people and important figures in English teaching in this country but also around the world like Ken Watson like Jack Thompson like Paul Brock. Um, and it's been a real joy to me uh, in recent times to see the way that um, the, these great figures have been re-energised around curriculum debates and are contributing to the, to the broader public debates and are certainly have been very supportive of the work that Association is doing and I've been very thankful for that.